All right. Today we have a Chambers dehumidifier. Uh, this dehumidifier was recently given up by someone who got uh, central air conditioning or better air conditioning in their house, so they didn't need it anymore. And when they gave it up, they said that it was freezing, and so it probably needed to have a, a new heater. Um, older dehumidifiers like this uh, don't have a freeze sensor, which would uh, turn off the uh, compressor and let the fan run. So uh, something else is causing this to freeze up. Most likely it's clogged in the back. Uh, just We can see just by looking that there is no filter present. There should be some foam material here that you take out and wash once in a while or whatever. Uh, I'd encourage whoever ends up with this, I don't have one or I'd put it in there, to put something uh, in there to catch the dust and keep it from entering the coils. Uh, because as we get into the machine further, you'll see what the coils look like. And I can guarantee you that there's oodles and oodles of dirt and dust that's keeping uh, air from flowing across there and, and basically thawing the unit out. So we'll get into it. I just wanted to kind of give that as an overview. Um, and we'll look at it a little more as I get it open. So, um, fan comes on, pulls air through, hits the cool vents, relieves the moisture, passes through the warmer vents from the process of compressing the gas. That's what heats this up um, and kind of reheats the air and makes it ready to go back out and, and get, some more, um, get some more moisture. That's why the temperature in a room can go up a degree or two from running a dehumidifier because ultimately the process does create heat. <clears throat> when these ice up, things we look for are number one, does the fan does the fan spin freely? And this fan does. And the second thing we look for are plugged coils because if they're plugged, then air won't flow across them and be reheated and flow back out. And so as you can see from looking at the front of this, I think you can see it. A, they're they're pretty dirty, and B, it looks like they've been smashed right across the front here, uh, and certainly no air is going to pass through there. So, if I were to bet about a place where um, these would start to freeze up, that might be one of the places. There's not a lot of air passing through there. Instead, it's resting on there. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush, it's just a radiator brush, and I'm going to run it in the same direction as the coils. Oops, a little piece of foam there. Uh, I'm going to run it in the same direction as the coils and get as much of the dust out of there as I can. And then I'm going to straighten the coils out where they're smushed, at least as best I can, so that air will flow through them again. They won't be like new, but they'll be better than nothing. So if you haven't actually seen the coils in your dehumidifier, then you can't really be sure that they're, uh, they're okay and clean. There's another solution to this. Remember the fan moves this way and pulls air through and so if I blow the air back the other way I'm going to take some time now and just very carefully work between these fins and try to try to straighten them out. I'm not going to get them perfect. I just want air to be able to move between them where today it the places where it can't. So
now they're straightened up enough so air can pass through it. So I think that's the, the best we're going to be able to do. And over time, we'll have to just make sure that we come through with a... Usually you don't need a stiff brush like this. Usually a light brush, like this radiator brush, is adequate. There you go. So the unit is in the off position. And right now it is using no electricity. As we turn this, it should come on. Both the fan and the compressor came on. That's fine. They come on all together all the time. It's only drawing together, they draw about 400 watts. That's about the third of a hair dryer. Um, and I can feel that the compressor is running. And then, in addition to knowing how much power the unit is using. The fan itself would use about 40 watts when it was running all by itself. So, with the compressor running a minute or two, what we should feel if we follow this insulated pack over to here, we should see, start to feel cool, which I am I'm already feeling coolness in the coils, and that's what we're supposed to feel. Now, if you notice this unit started. even though I have the bucket in my hand. <laughs> Turn down the humidity and the unit does shut off. It started even though I have the bucket in my hand because this has a, um, a bucket switch when the bucket fills up, gravity causes the bucket to push the switch and turn the unit off. It also lights a light on the front of the unit, which we can see right there. So, looks like the bucket switch works. I can't turn the unit on when the bucket is full. On the other hand, if the bucket's out of place or something, this is going to continue to dump water all over the place. Modern dehumidifiers normally work just the opposite. If there's no bucket, they won't even turn on. So the bucket has to be in place or something like that to, in order for the unit to work. Um, so from everything I could see, this unit comes on when I, when I ask it to. It gets cold when I ask it to. I've cleaned the coils with, uh, with a brush and air. I've straightened the coils out so that the uh, air will flow across them in the future. I'm going to put the case back on this and I'm going to return it to the person who owns it now for the summer. Thanks for bringing it in.